Okay, so for this lesson, we're going to be going through energy stores and energy transfer. First, let's go about defining what energy is. Energy is the amount of stuff we need to do something. Now, this is a very vague definition. This is because energy is very hard to define in physics. But on the very basic level, it means the amount of stuff we need, and that stuff is energy, to, to, do, to do something. So this is to do anything in the world, like anything. It, go, it, can, it can vary from walking to climbing to, to, fe to eating, anything, to, to do anything. So this refers to anything. Okay, now let's look at some different types of energy stores. So energy stores are places where energy can be stored in, 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 a, in a specific way. So first, let's look at gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is the energy we need based on how high something is. Okay, so um, it's anything in a gravitational field. Okay, so let's write gravitational field. So a gravitational field, it exists around all planets. So, for example, our Earth has a gravitational field. The moon has a gravitational field. The sun has a gravitational field. OK, now, if you have any object near the planet, it will have gravitational potential energy. OK, so any object near a planet will have some gravitational potential energy. So, for example, you, because we're, we are an object, we have some mass, we, we, we have some gravitational potential energy because we are around the Earth, right? So it's the same thing. So gravitational potential energy is anything in a gravitational field. And the, 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 way, the way we understand it is the higher up something is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. So GPE. Okay, so the, the higher up something is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. For example, if this is the floor, and I have a ball here, and then... In the second instance, this is the floor, and I have a ball up here. Which one's higher up? Well, this one's closer to the floor, and this one's higher up from the floor. So this one's obviously higher up because it's greater distance above. Right? So we can say that this instance has more gravitational potential energy. Now we're going to look at the second type of energy store, which is kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy is the energy we have when anything moves. So anything moving has kinetic energy. So what are examples of something that is moving? Well, um, a car, for example, a car moves from one place to another. When you, when you walk, you move from one place to another. And whenever you're moving, you have some kinetic energy. Okay, so anything that is moving has kinetic energy. The next one we're going to look at is elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored by anything which is stretched or compressed. Anything that is stretched or compressed, what could that be? Well, let's uh, take an example. Let's take, uh, let's, let's say I have this, um, let's say I have this block, okay? And I, I compress this block, I, I push it, I push this block on either side. Suppose that this is my rubber or eraser and I push it on either side. What's going to happen to the rubber? Well, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna to look something like this, right? going to look something like this. It's going to shrink in, in this direction, right? It's going to shrink in that direction. So we say that this is a compression. And therefore, because after we've done this, it stores some energy. How do we know it has, has this energy stored? Well, what's going to happen when we, when we remove these, when we remove these forces? What's going to happen when we, when we take these away? Well, the rubber is just going to go back to what it was before, right? So it has, so it must have some energy because it's doing something. It's, 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 it's compressing. So it's doing something. And therefore we know, we know that it must store some elastic potential energy. Okay. And, and the same thing can be said for if we have something like this and then we stretch it. What happens if we stretch something? Well, it gets longer, right? It'll get longer like this. When it gets longer, we know that well, something has happened, right? It's done something. It's, it's stretched. Therefore, it has some energy. The next type of energy that we're going to look at is chemical energy. Now, what is chemical energy? Well, chemical energy is the energy that is released by a chemical reaction. So whenever we have any chemical reaction, chemical reactions release chemical energy. 
Now you can think of some chemical reactions that you may have learned in chemistry. Um, for example, combustion of any fuel. So if we have a fuel and we combust it, what are we doing to it? Well, we're heating it up until it burns, right? When we, when we burn something, we know something gets hotter. So there's, there, there is some energy being released. And that release, the, the energy that is, in it, it is initially at is chemical energy. It, it releases from chemical energy to some other type of energy. Or another example could be when we eat something. So when we, when we eat food, food in our stomach digests, which we know is a chemical process. And therefore, there is some chemical energy stored within the food that we eat. Okay, so chemical reactions release chemical energy. Okay, the next type of energy that we're going to look at is magnetic energy. What is magnetic energy? Well, magnetic energy, if, we have, if I have two magnets, for example, let's say I have, I have one magnet which looks like this. I have one side which is north and the other side which is south. I have another magnet which looks something like this. Okay, and um, and then again, I have uh, I have this side which is north and this side which is south. Right. Now, what's going to happen to what's going to happen to this mag with these two magnets? Well, we know that north and south will attract. Right, these two will attract. Now, when they attract, what happens to the magnets? Well, the magnets they they move closer to each other. Right. This this one goes this way because it's attracted, right? And so therefore the magnet is doing something. The magnet is, is going from here to here because it's attracted. It wants to go, this north side wants to go to the south side. Um, and, and so the magnet is, is doing something. The magnet moves, right? So whenever this, because, because, we know that, because we know that something has happened, again, go back to our definition of energy. The amount of stuff that we need to do something. Well, something is happening. We did something, right? We did something when we put these two magnets next to each other. When we put these magnets next to each other, something happened, right? So we did something. And therefore, there must be some stuff. And that stuff is energy. So, so we, have, we, have some, we, have some, we have some magnetic energy between these two. So magnetic energy is when two magnets either attract or they repel. And it is stored as magnetic energy energy okay so we have when when magnets attract or when they repel okay let's look at so that there, there are only two more types of energy stores so the sixth energy store that we're going to look at is electrostatic and what is electrostatic energy well electrostatic energy what is what is electro electro sounds like uh, well we know we know electro has something to do with charges right so we can have we can have one charge here and we can have another charge here and maybe let's say that this charge is positive and this charge is negative. Well, again, we know that positive and negative, what, what happens to positive and negative? They attract, right? So again, they are doing something. What happens, what happens uh, when, when we do something? When we do something, that means we need to have some stuff and that stuff is energy. So again, something happens between these two. These two attract each other. This one goes that way and that one goes this way. So these two attract, they, they attract each other and therefore we know something is happening. We know that, we know that opposite charges attract each other and, um, and like charges repel each other. And so opposite charges attract, like charges repel. And therefore there must be some, because, because something is happening, there must be some energy. So there's electrostatic energy between these two. So electrostatic energy exists between charges. So these are charges. Okay, now let's look at the seventh type of energy. Thermal energy is heat, essentially. So this is heat energy. Whenever something is hot, it has high thermal energy. If something is cold, it has low thermal energy. So this one's really easy. It's just, the more hot something is, the higher the thermal energy. The colder something is, the lower the thermal energy. Okay? Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.